One of the toughest parts about making a film, especially when you are in a key creative position like producer or director, is allocating your budget in order to maximize the amount of money you have to make the best possible film. As the saying goes, put every dollar up on the screen. Let's call it again. Come on up. Come on. And for independent films, this is even more important as budgets are usually pretty tight and money not as easy to come by. Today, I'm going to take you through how to create a budget for any project, whether it's a feature length film or a two day commercial project. If you want to be a producer, director, or run any sort of production company, you're going to have to do this at some point. So it's good to familiarize yourself with the process and what things actually cost so you can realistically plan your shoot. Today, I'll be working on a Google spreadsheet that I'm offering as a free download for people who sign up for my newsletter in the description below. This newsletter, I'm not going to spam you, but it's going to be a couple times a month and I'll write about my time in the industry, career advice, gear advice, and whatever else you folks find helpful. So sign up below and get access to the free budget creator spreadsheet below. For the process of this video, I'm going to be using an example of something I've done quite a bit, the short documentary. This isn't going to be as intensive as something like our 40 minute Netflix short heroin, where we shot for over 30 days over the course of a year and then had a three or four month edit. But it's going to be more intensive than a quick one to two day short doc. I'm mostly speaking about a doc that has you know, six to 10 shoot days and results in something like six to 12 minute branded content documentary. Some good examples would be something like the short films that Yeti makes or Patagonia, or even the short documentary I made on a guitar manufacturer in Kentucky that employs people in recovery. So let's open up the Google spreadsheets and get to budget making. So today we're gonna be working on a budget that is a fully funded budget, meaning you actually have money to make the film that you wanna make. Often when you're just starting out or even now on smaller commercial jobs, you might only have you know, a few thousand dollars or less or maybe five, ten thousand dollars to actually make the film that you wanna make. And when that's the case, there's probably not a huge advantage to going through and making a full budget like this. Because if you are someone who has some technical ability, like a cinematographer or editor, you're probably gonna be doing a lot of the work yourself. You just need to figure out what jobs am I not going to do and figure out how much that costs and then just hire people to do those jobs. Making budgets like this is really for stuff that's a little bit higher budget. So it could be a commercial job, it could be a feature length film, it could be a documentary. There's obviously a ton of different variety within video production itself. So here we are on my sample film budget. I use this for almost everything. And even this budget is a very simplified version of what most films would use. So a lot of films will use a program called Movie Magic. Uh, which I had to learn for our two Netflix films, Heroin and Recovery Boys. So Movie Magic is just very in-depth. It's got a ton of line items in it. And this is for really you know, big budget films that have an insane amount of people working on them. And so sometimes streamers or publishers or distributors will require you use it just because it's the industry standard, right? So Netflix wanted to use Movie Magic because that's what they're used to. And even though 95% of our line items were blank and they were just all zero dollars, we still went through the process of creating everything in Movie Magic. On one of my budgets, if I'm using like a documentary or a doc series, I'll have in Movie Magic right here at the top just to remind myself, you know, I can make this in Google Sheets and then later transport it into Movie Magic. But I find Movie Magic a little difficult to work with if you are just doing a smaller budget. So this is Movie Magic here. And as you can tell, you know, this is a PDF version of uh, one of our documentaries where obviously all these things are zeros. We didn't have a firearm specialist or a manufacturer props buyer or a food stylist or a kitchen staff. A lot of different things uh, that you could use Movie Magic for, or you can add to the sample film budget that I have here. So the first thing that most budgets have on them, whether it's the front page or at the top of the, the first page, is a thing called assumptions. And assumptions are basically everything that the budget assumes, right? So how many shoot days there are, where is it going to be shot, who's the production company, who's the director and producer. So these aren't necessarily etched in stone, but you're assuming that this is how things are going to go. Up here in my assumptions, you have format. What are the deliverables? You know, 4K deliverable, ProRes 422 HQ is usually what is required by a streamer like Netflix uh, or some variation thereof. And then the production company, you could just put in your production company. So I'll put in mine, current motion. Director and producer, let's say I'm going to go ahead and direct and produce this one. You don't have to be director and producer, it can just be directors, but most directors also do some producing. Um, and then producer, we'll go put Elliot, the guy who's filming this right now. <laughs> he can produce this film. And if you don't have any other producers, you can just leave those blank. 
And then over here is just sort of the general timeline, what you assume is going to be your general timeline to complete this film. Uh, so when the production starts, ends, when the edit starts, when a rough cut is delivered, a fine cut, picture lock, color and sound, and then finally final delivery. So that's everything that the budget assumes. This can change, but as long as everyone starts on this page, you know, that's, that's very helpful for everyone involved. So as I mentioned before, there are two main segments of a budget. There's above the line and below the line. So the above the line are all the people who are going to be involved in the production from start to finish. Pre-production, production, post-production, post and delivery. And that's usually a director and producer. And then you also add in all the pre-production uh, materials that you might have used. So this would also be like writers, if you're doing a narrative or, or fiction script, um, research, development, pre-production scripts, um, research shoots, those sort of things. Those all go in this first section. So for this project, we did a little bit of pre-production, let's say five days, and then we'll do that at you know, 750 a day for that producer to do all those pre-production processes. And then for this director, producer, often directors make a percentage of the total budget. So it's a little difficult to say what a director should get before you actually know the budget of the project. But we're doing a branded content short documentary. It's probably gonna come in around, let's say fifty, sixty thousand dollars once we go through all the different line items. And so we'll go ahead and put five thousand dollars for the director. And then we have a producer who's working full time on it as well, and we'll give them thirty five hundred. And they're in columns where the unit is allow. And allow just means that this is just an agreed upon sum for this particular crew members. So Cinematographers, ACs, they'll all work on day rates. Editors might work on weekly rates, but often people who are involved in the process from start to finish just work on one fixed rate. It's not always the case. On smaller commercial jobs, there's one or two days. Directors will sometimes get just hefty day rates, um, but we'll just go ahead and say in this project specifically, they are just under the unit number of allow, and they each got 5,000 and 3,500. So that brings our above the line total to 12,250. And this is for pre-production and our two principal crew members, the director and the producer. All right, moving on to below the line. And as I said today, we're thinking this is, you know, an eight to 12 minute branded content short documentary. And so I went ahead and put the amount of shoot days we're going to do at eight shoot days. I filled a lot of this in already. You have the director of photography at eight days, uh, the B camera AC, which is a bit of a luxury for documentaries for sure. Um, but if it's a branded content commercial piece, um, the way like Yeti and Patagonia does, they probably have those. And then we put them at $600 a day. And then the sound recordist is at $650, also eight days. And then a production assistant, uh, also eight days. And again, about $200. Uh, with no line producer for this, and maybe a still photographer comes out for one day uh, to get some commercial style photography. And so we went ahead and put those in there as well. And then some extra below the lines, you have your music and composer. Composers are a luxury. You can always use something like Artlist or Audio, which I'm sure you've seen advertised all over YouTube. A composer would be awesome to have, so we can put them in there for $5,000. Here's sort of our total for this section, and this is what I call sort of the crew section. It's part of the below the line, um, but again, as you can see, getting, getting expensive, we're almost at $20,000 on just sort of that principal daily crew. You can add tons of stuff in this section, right? As you saw in Movie Magic, there's an insane amount of things that you could add to this, uh, whether it's a chief lighting technician or a lamp operator or a generator operator, whatever it might be. There's tons of different things that you can put in this section. And so you can always just add lines, for example, just inserting a call or a row and just adding in the next line. And there's a reason that these are all four numbers long because you can tell by this, you can get pretty, uh, high in the numbers for each section once you start adding more and more crew members. So the next column is all your production expenses, and these are going to be expenses that you incur while actually on production. Costs that you just can't get around, things like gas, hotels, and food. All these people you just put in your budget, you gotta feed them, so you gotta pay for that food. And then also things like camera and lighting equipment. You can often split these up depending on the size of, of the budget and the size of the crew, but you have your camera package and your lighting package, and these are the rental costs for what it costs to rent these for an eight day shoot. And so it just depends on what camera you're using. If you're using something like a RED or an Aerie or a Sony Venice, then that obviously is going to be much more expensive than if you're using something like a Sony FX3 or even a Canon C70, which I'm using right now. You just need to figure out what is the actual cost of that by talking to your local rental house, if you have one, or going on websites like Lens Pro to Go or Lens Rentals to actually put together the list of everything you'll need for the shoot and go ahead and put that in your budget of how much that will cost you. Now, if you own all your own equipment, as I do for most of my things, I'll rent a few higher end items or some supplementary items depending on the budget size, then you can just 
basically rent your own equipment to the production. And so, for example, for our Netflix shoots, we owned all of our own equipment and we rented it to the production, which is just another way that you can potentially make money on different projects. Obviously, you're paying off gear that you've already paid for, but once that gear is paid off, then any time you rent it out, it's just profit. So it's one reason why I really like owning my own gear, other than the fact that I like to go out and just shoot and make my own stuff all the time. So everything in this section, camera package, SD cards, CF Express cards, field drives, SSDs, just add it all in here. And then down here is your local expenses. Again, gas, car rental, parking, tolls, meals, hotels, airfare, everything that costs money to get the job actually done. So you just add all of that in here. And this isn't an exhaustive list, but it's just a start so that you can add your own things that you need to in order to completely fill out your budget. Let's go ahead and say this is gonna be a local shoot since I did say it was in Knoxville. So we can take airfare down to zero, hotels down to zero. And again, you can see why hiring local is sometimes beneficial because you don't have to pay for things like hotels and airfare, which is often almost as expensive as just hiring the person on a date rate. All right, so we're through the production and now we have everything shot, everything's in the can, and we are moving into post-production. And post-production really consists of a big section of time, which is the edit, and then a shorter but expensive part of the time, which is sound design and color. And so everything that happens in post-production is put here in this section, from editorial staff to editorial equipment, graphics, color correction, post sound, uh, if there are any travel costs associated with getting the director or producer to the location of where the film is actually being edited. For an editor for picture, usually unlike a DP or an AC, which work on day rates, they often work on weekly rates, and that's only because editing takes so much longer than actual production. You obviously can do day rates for, for editing, but if you're gonna do two weeks or three weeks or a month, or like we did for Recovery Boys, seven months of editing, you're obviously gonna pay, be paying people on a weekly rate or a monthly rate, which generally saves you money because people will work for a little bit less per day if they know the job is six, seven, eight, nine months long. And so I like to work in weeks, and it just kind of depends on where you're located, how much an editor costs. In the feature doc worlds where films are fully funded, I've heard a lot of $10,000 a month for an editor, sometimes $12,000, $15,000 a month, which when you think about 20 days is actually not crazy expensive on a per day rate, which is about $500 per day if my math's right. But on a weekly basis, you might be looking at something like $2,000 or $2,500 per week. And so we'll just change this to $2,500. And then an assistant editor, you know, I think for a project like this, I probably wouldn't use one. You probably don't need a post-production supervisor on this. And post-production supervisors are very useful on bigger budget projects because they make sure everything that happens in the process of post-production from creating proxies to renting the studio to making sure the editor stays on schedule. And then especially once you lock picture and it starts going to the colorist and the sound designers and the finishing, all of those things, you have a lot of different files going a lot of different directions. It's nice to have a post-production supervisor that keeps all of that in line. But for this project, I don't think we need it. So we will just put that at zero for this time. And then obviously editorial equipment. Some of the projects, you just have your own RAID system or your own drives already, and you may not charge it to the production, but it's nice to have one master editing drive, which will put it $400 and three backup drives. Maybe we buy something a little cheaper for the backups and we'll call that 200 bucks. Edit room rental for a project this size, you probably don't include that. Um, and then you could also potentially uh, pay for your software like Adobe Creative Suites or Premiere Pro, but again, a lot of smaller budget things do not need that. So we'll just put that at zero. So graphics and titles designer, again, depends on the project, but often, you know, shorter commercial projects like this, you're not gonna hire a graphics and motion designer. And so we'll put that at zero. And then the online edits, conforming and digitizing. Again, you know, that's just sort of making sure all the raw files are reconnected for color and exported. And so we can stick that at zero as well. Good color correction is expensive, but not always. But if you just did something like eight hours at $100 uh, per hour, you can get maybe a good colorist to work on a project of this length for maybe a day for $800. And then finally, two days for sound editing design and then one day for the final mix. And if you have any travel costs for the director and producer, you can add these in here. Again, we're working local this time, so we can put that at zero. Just a few more things, more administrative things to add to your budget, and that's your insurance. Uh, it's always nice to obviously have insurance in case something goes terribly, terribly wrong. And there's a few different types of insurance. Production insurance is anything that happens on production. That's probably one of the more important things. Securities and protocols, I'm actually not 100% sure what that is. We'll just put that at zero. I can't remember what I used that for, but we had it in there at some point, something Netflix probably required. And then errors and omissions insurance is basically anyone who sees your film and wants to sue you, basically. 
and you have this insurance in case that happens and someone sues you because of some error or omission that you made in your own project, this covers that possibility, which probably wouldn't happen, but just in case, it's nice to have. And then finally, any office and administrative things that you might include in your budget. Again, for a budget this size, we're probably not gonna charge a whole lot of this back to the client, so we'll just go ahead and put all that to zero. And then you might be able to get, you know, your lawyer, your entertainment lawyer, if you have one, um, or your production accountant, get them, sneak them into the budget a little bit just to pay off some of them. But for this project, that's not happening. So we'll put those at zero. So our total below the line is all of these different columns added up. As you can see here, the total for each section is in the sum of the total and just making sure that you know this is all correct. I've made mistakes before. That comes out to 43,360. And these two are just the above the line and the below the line added up for our subtotal. So as you remember from before, our above the line budget was 12,250 and our below the line was 43,000, which comes out to $55,610. And then, so that is our actual budget for this project. And then finally, at the bottom of this, we have contingency and contingency is just any sort of mistakes you might have made in the budget. So maybe you underestimated how much gas would cost or how much hotels would cost. You just have 5% of your budget added onto the top so that any of those small mistakes you can, you can work through with your contingency budget to cover the cost. And so for this project, the contingency is 5%, which comes out to $2,168, which comes to our total budget of $57,778, which is a pretty darn good budget for something like this. Again, this is for a fully funded commercial branded content documentary. When it comes down to it, budgets like that are not necessarily impossible to get, especially from some of the bigger players. Usually what I'll do is actually kind of do the opposite of this rather than just put all the line items. I will start with what my budget is and then work backwards. So I'll put, you know, maybe my budget's 20,000 and I'll start putting negatives of people I know I have to hire and then see basically how much I have left over and how many of the roles I'll have to take on myself. So I'll do a quick run through of this just to show how you can use this for smaller projects. Put my budget at the bottom here, like so. And then go ahead and add these three up right here. And now you know you're starting with 20,000. And then as I go through and add all of the different light items that I know that I'll, I'll need to pay for, then this will subtract from this subtotal and that subtotal will basically be whatever my profit is. So how much money do I personally want to make? If I know that I'm gonna be the director or producer, and I'm gonna produce it, then I'll just keep it at zero. Maybe I hire another producer for just a little bit of help on a couple of days and they get $2,000. So we can put negative $2,000. I also get hired quite a bit to be a DP, so I don't feel like it's a huge hit to uh, not hire someone else. So I'll go ahead and be the director of photography. It's always nice having some sort of B camera or AC, and this isn't necessarily someone, you know, who's a dedicated focus puller or anything like that, but just a second person to have on hand, whether it's working a gimbal or helping with lights. I'll often have a B camera slash gaffer. That's kind of one of my favorite combo is just someone to help me out with lighting um, and potentially pick up a second camera to shoot or just help with batteries and lenses. And so we'll go ahead and have them on this project. Uh, this is a shorter shoot than before. It's just a three day shoot. So we'll put them in for three days at 650. And there you go there's their total negative 1950. That's subtracting from my overall budget. I love having a production assistant. You know, I just always need someone to just run to, to the car, go pick up food, and generally they're fairly cheap. And these are people who are just starting out in the industry. And around here, you can probably pay 150 to 250 a day. So we'll just do an average of negative 200. Don't need a line producer. Don't need a still photographer. Not gonna get a composer for a job of this size. We're just gonna use our list. And then camera package and lighting. I own all my own equipment. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this at zero. I own all my own SD cards. I'm not gonna do any transcriptions because now Premiere Pro does that for you pretty easily. And then some things that, you know, you just can't get around gas, that sort of stuff. We'll just go ahead on our three days of shooting. We'll just go ahead and say, we're gonna spend $50 on gas per day. I'm not gonna rent a car, I'm doing this local. Parking, probably don't need any parking. And then down into post-production, all of this stuff is negotiable. Like what do you want to hire other people for to up the quality of the product? I'm gonna go ahead and edit this myself. And so we'll keep that at $0. Same with color, I can throw a good LUT on it and do some minor tweaks. And I feel like most of my color works well enough for a lot of the projects that I do. But if I was going to hire someone to do something, it might be color correction. And so maybe for this project, I'll go ahead and give one day of color correction, pay someone $750 to do that. And then same with sound design, give one day just to someone to clean up all the audio, add in some sound effects, 
and we'll do that negative 750 as well. We're not gonna have a contingency for this one, so we're just gonna put that at zero. So as you can see, working backwards, we start with a budget of 20,000. I hired a producer, I hired a gaffer, and I hired a colorist, and I hired a sound designer, which brings my total to negative 4,200, which means that I, as the director, DP, editor, would make $15,800 off of this project, which is a pretty good payday. When it probably comes down to it, I'd probably spend a little bit more money to hire people to help me with this project and take a little bit more of a hit on the profit because this is a pretty good profit for a project of this size. But this is just to show that there are ways to work backwards on a budget so that if you have a set budget, which a lot of commercial projects do, then you know kind of what it is that you potentially could make as a production company, as a director, as the person sort of in charge putting together the budget. So there you go, that's how I make a budget in Google Spreadsheets. And then if you're using like Movie Magic, you can transfer all of this into the giant form that is Movie Magic. But for 99% of the projects I do, this will suffice for sure. And as I mentioned before, this budget is available as a free download if you sign up for my newsletter below. So just click the link in the description. And that's it for this video, and we'll see you in the next one.